All right, it's time to talk Kramer's Rule. We're going to learn what is my favorite way to solve 3x3 three three systems. For 2x2s, two it kind of depends on the system and all of those things. We're going to learn uh, and, and all of that. But for 3x3, three three, this is definitely my personal favorite way to solve a system. It's not the last way we're going to learn. We're going to learn also about inverse, solving it using inverse matrices, which is kind of cool too. But so in order to learn how to use Kramer's rule, Kramer's rule uses determinants. And so we have to learn what a determinant is. So we're going to really oversimplify what a determinant is. So a determinant is a way to take a matrix and to smoosh it into a single number and kind of give you an evaluation of a system as a single number. Uh, that's for it's for us it's just a thing this is a determinant and this is how you calculate it and we're going to use it to solve systems right so we're not going to get into the weeds too much with the with the concepts and whatever else so we're going to start with a with a pretty detailed explanation or more or less detailed explanation of a two by two determinant first of all notation so the turn the determinant of this matrix is now this is what we're what we're adding is we use these straight bars, oops, we use these straight bars instead of brackets to represent determinant. Now this doesn't mean this in this context does not mean absolute value, it means determinant. How would you know which is which? Well, in context, right? If it's if it's a matrix-like thing with all this stuff, and we're talking about determinant, right? And so in order to calculate it, this it's written out here, but I'm gonna kind of with some colors. In fact, I may I'm probably I may even need more colors than what I usually use. We'll see. I'll leave leave some of this extra stuff open, right? <coughs> so what we do is is we take and we multiply this sort of down diagonal so a times d and then we subtract the going up diagonal so a times d minus c times b right and so that's what we do so let's let's put some some understanding on that by looking at this example so we're supposed to find the determinant of this matrix and we know we're supposed to do that because of those kind of straight up and down bars right so the determinant of this so in order to do that we're going to multiply this sort of down diagonal so we've got five times nine and then we're going to subtract this going up diagonal so this way so we're going to subtract eight times negative four right so then we're going to actually calculate that. So five times nine, it's kind of an ugly looking nine. That's slightly less ugly. Maybe it looks more like a nine now at least, right? So we've got 45 and then negative eight times four. What am I writing? 40, 45, <laughs> negative eight times four is plus 32. So 45 plus 32 is 77. And it's that simple. That's how we find the determinant of a two by two matrix. We're going to do that several times again here in a minute. And so we'll see some more examples. Let's look at how to do it with a three by three matrix, right? Get a little bit bigger. So on a three by three matrix, it's, it's a little less straightforward because now we can't just go, we can't really just go blap and then blap because we're missing a whole bunch of numbers. So how do we fix that problem? Well, it's real simple. What we do is, is we rewrite these first two columns. Now, I will note that there's actually another way to calc to do a three by three determinant. You use sub matrices and all of that kind of stuff. We're not going to stress about learning another method here. We're going to learn one method. I actually, even when I teach pre-cal, I still only teach this one method because, um, I like this method better and it's easier to just remember one and so there it is okay so what we do is we rewrite these first two columns first step easy peasy right just take this column put him there that column put him there right don't forget to make your signs right right make sure you put in the correct signs that's an easy place always to make mistakes so then you actually ultimately are going to do basically the same thing i'm going to kind of draw it on here and then we're we're going to get we're going to, and then I'll show you. So we're going to multiply positively. Now I'll explain what I mean by that. We're going to multiply positively down the going down diagonal. So this direction right here. 
So we're going to multiply these and we're going to add all those up. So I'm going to, I'm going to start and I'm going to go ahead and do those. So we're going to do four times two times nine. That's that first going down diagonal, right? And then I'm going to add the next one. So negative eight times six times negative four. This is, I, I really recommend using some colors on this, just like we did on multiplying matrices, right? It's just easier to keep track of what's going on when you're using colors. So then I'm going to add the other going down diagonal. So I'm going to add three times negative three times five, right? And now we're going to do the same thing. So remember when we did our two by two matrix, we did this and then we subtracted the going up diagonals. We're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to subtract all of the going up diagonals. So we're going to take and we're going to subtract this one and we're going to subtract this one and we're going to subtract that one. Right? Okay, so we're going to go through and we're going to subtract. So we're going to do minus negative four times two. That's this one right here, this green one. Keeping it, keeping it straight and organized. Times three. Right? And then we're going to subtract this next one. So minus five times six times four. And then we're going to subtract that last diagonal. You may be, let me, let me get this down and then I'll, and then I'll say those words. That's real hard to see. I think we're not going to use that, that dark, per, that dark blue. Let's, let's use maybe this pink color. I think that's going to be easier to see. Minus nine times negative three times negative eight. Yeah, that's that's good. I don't usually use all of these colors. They kind of clash with my background. The other ones really go well with the background, but that's fine. We need more colors, so we're going to use them. All right, so now let's walk through. Oh, before I, I got distracted by colors, um, you may be tempted to say, okay, well, well, we didn't use this one or that one. That's true, kind of. Now, we did actually, though, because see, we used the negative three right here. We used it twice even, and we used the two right here. So we actually are using them, we're just using that they're just, we don't use the, these ones that we wrote and rewrote directly, right? So they get used, but they don't get used. So don't stress about that. That's correct. That's how it's supposed to be. So we add the down diagonals and subtract the going up diagonals. So we, now all that remains is just to do the math. So we got four times two times eight, excuse me, four times two times nine. So eight times nine, which is 72. And then plus negative eight times four times, no, eight times six times four, 24 times eight. I'm going to pull up the calculator and do that just to, I don't know. We know that I make mistakes on accident because, you know, making a video, it happens, right? Eight times six times four. I still highly recommend doing the signs in your head don't don't try to do the signs in the calculator it's an easy way to make a mistake and you think you did it right and you didn't do it right because if you do the signs in your head that's a good way to engage your brain and make sure that everything's going well so a neg there's an even number of negatives so it turns out positive was nine 192 yeah 192 now there's an odd number of negatives so it's going to be a minus Three times three is nine times five is 45. And then minus, we're into the minuses now. Minus, well, let's just look at the number of negative. Negative, negative is positive, right? Even number of negatives in this green bit turn out positive. Four times two is eight times three is 24. If I'm making mistakes, put it in the comments, make fun of me in class, whatever, it's fine, no big deal. Odd number of negatives, there's only one, so this is going to turn out to be minus. We've got 30 times 4, which would be 120. And then we've got 1, 2, 3 minuses, so an odd number of minuses, so it's going to come out, out my, negative. 9 times 3 times 8, I don't know, there's a lot of numbers in there. Let's go ahead and chunk that in here to make sure we don't make, it's going to be 27 times 8 which is, I don't even know. I could take a second to do it, but you know, 
easier to just do that. 216, right? 216. So now we've got to add all these up. So we've got 72 plus 192, so that'd be 264. I'm going to kind of, the way I'm, this is, you could totally just punch all of this in your calculator and whatever else. I'm going to kind of do this in twos because then we can kind of see what's going on. So this one goes to here. And then, I don't know what I'm writing. It's supposed to be a little arrow. And then this one, negative. 45 plus 24 is going to be a minus something, right? Because the signs are different. We subtract, keep the sign of the bigger one. So that'd be 21, negative 21. I don't know why it was still in pink because I didn't change it, right? These times, this, the signs are the same. So we add and keep the sign. So it's going to be a negative uh, 336. Yeah, we're doing doing okay. So now let's see, 24 minus <coughs> four, 24 minus 21 is positive three, and then minus 336. We're totally getting a different number than what's in the answer key. Let me pause it and find my mistake. We'll come back. I'm sure you already saw it and yelling at me through the screen. It's totally fine. Not a problem. It's good. If you were in class, if we were in class, you would have already caught it and, you know, whatever else. But I'll pause and come back. Okay, so I said it right. It was like, I, I don't know. Should I should have been able to just look down and see it, but I didn't. This should have been 264 obs because how I, I missed a whole number. I didn't put a six on there. What, what had happened? I don't know. <laughs> how about 264? Right there, minus 21, that would be 243. 243, minus 336, let's pop that in here. 243 minus 336 is negative 93. Now it's all matching up. Now there's no mistakes. Okay, so let's do a few more things now. So now we know how to do the determinant, right? We're at, we're, yeah, well, we'll see. This is going to be a longer lesson because it's a longer lesson. So, you know, life is life. So now let's see how to use the determinant to solve a system. We haven't learned the Kramer's rule part yet. So we're supposed to solve this system with Kramer's rule. So then we're going to start with a two by two and we're going to do this example. And then we're going to do another example with a three by three. And then we're going to be finished. So. In order to do Kramer's rule, we have to find three different matrices. We have to, or three different determinants. If it's a two by two, if we have a three by three, we're going to do four different matrices, uh, determinants of matrices. And so here's what we do. So here's the first one. The first one that we are going to find is the c matrix right and we get that c you could call it whatever you want we're going to use the letter c and we get that because if we're going through here this is a b c right and so we're going to get a c matrix which is kind of the base matrix and so the <coughs> c matrix looks like this now now pay attention pay attention here here we go so the c matrix is for this particular system would be 5, negative 6, 3, 4. Now, where did I get those numbers? Take a second. Look, where did I get them? I got them from the coefficients right here. So it's very important. Now, this, this is very important. In order to use Kramer's rule, all of your, all of your equations have to be in standard form, right? That is, is quite important. We have to, in order to use it, they have to be in standard form or at least close to it. I, I don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure X can be negative and it's fine. We, we could, we could test it and be sure, but I'm pretty sure that's fine. And if you want to be safe, just make it fully in standard form and make this leading coefficient positive, positive, or if you want to live dangerously, try it out. So that's the first determinant we need to do. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we're going to do these diagonals. So this one, so five times four is 20. And then we're going to do minus three times negative six, which is negative 18. We got a ka-chink, ka-chink right there. 
And so that one is 38, right? We're doing good. We're matching, matching our notes so far. Yeah, we are. We're doing great. Okay, so that's the first one. I said we have to do three of them for this guy. So the next one that we have to do in order to find, so this we call, this we call C. We're going to call this the determinant of C. Okay, now the next determinant we have to find is, you know, that's what the book uses, but forget it. I like using D for determinant. So our big D, our D by itself because then the next bit makes sense. So the next determinant that we have to find is d sub x. Okay. And let me show you what that's going to look like. What that's going to look like is 15, negative 6, negative 29, 4. What did we do? Well, we took all of the coefficients on the x term and we replaced it with that c over there, the guy all by himself. All right? So we took and we just and we wrote see these these ones are the same as they were before. It's going to make even even more sense when we do a 3 by 3 because there'll be even more that's the same and only one column is, is changed. So the d sub x is this guy right here. So we need to find this determinant, right? So we're going to we're going to do that one. So we're going to do here so 15 times 4 is 60. And then minus negative 29 times negative 6. Let's punch that in here. So 29 times 6 is 174. Negative times a negative is positive. So positive 174. 174. So it equals now 60 plus negative 174 or 60 minus 174. Signs are different. So we subtract. Keep the sign of the bigger one. So it's negative one, one, four. Matching our, our notes. Doing great so far. Doing great, grand, and glorious. So the next determinant that we need to find, you may have already guessed. Have you guessed it? Have you figured it out? We're going to find d sub y. How would we do that? What do you think? Make a guess. You guessed, you got your guess, let's see if you're right. Boy, we're going to do this. We're going to write 5 and 3 right here, and then we're going to put 15 and negative 29 right there. So we took and replaced the Y column with these right there. Easy peasy, right? So that's what we're going to do. So... We're going to, I kind of abandoned the colors halfway through that bit. Let's, let's unabandon it this time. Let's do this one. Five times negative 29. Five times 29 equals 145. Negative 145. Four, there we go. Okay, so then this, this one right there. So three times 15 is 45. So we're going to do minus... 45. Whoops. The sign's the same, so we add and keep the sign. So negative 190. That match matches. We're doing really great. Okay, so this is how we find the results. Because remember, we want an ordered pair. We want an X and a Y answer. That's our goal when we're solving this system, right? That's our plan. That's what we're trying to do. So how do we go from this? Oops. Edit, redo. Edit, redo, brush tool. Okay, good. So how do we get from this to that? Well, here we go. Here is the, here's the way the answer is going to look. The answer is going to be for each one of these ordered pairs. It's going to be the determinant D, the determinant of D in the denominator of a fraction. And then in the numerator of a fraction is, for the X part, is going to be the determinant X. And over here, it's going to be the determinant D sub Y. Easy peasy. Guess what it's going to be when we add a third one? D sub Z over, over D. Easy peasy. So in this case, it's going to be 
a negative 114 over 38 and negative 190 over 38. Let's punch those in the calculator, see what kind of magic might happen. 114 divided by 38 equals 3. So the x part is negative 3. Now what about the y part? 190 divided by 38, 5. Negative 5. Wow. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's do this one more time with a three by three matrix. Okay, so if we're if we're really lucky, we're gonna be able to fit all this on this page. I may have to use two pages. We'll see what happens. We're gonna do the best we can do. So our D matrix for this one, I'm gonna kind of shove it up here at the at the roof. Our D matrix would be all of these coefficients. The X ones, so four three, seven. I'm kind of doing it by column this time to kind of reinforce that for in a minute. So then we've got five. I was also about to point down here, but you can't, you can't see that. Five, negative two, negative six, and then negative six, seven, negative eight. Let's go ahead and find the determinant of that, right? So we've got to find the determinant there. We've got to rewrite these first two columns. Four, three, seven, five, negative two, negative six. Now you may be thinking to yourself, man, this is a lot to do this. Well, it is, and you're not wrong there. But see, the reason why I like Kramer's rule for a three by three is because you already, you guys already know, you've already done three by threes with elimination and all of that stuff. If you make one little mistake in elimination, you break everything. This one, it kind of segments it into, into individual bits. So we can still get X and Y right, but miss Z or whatever else. And it's kind of easier to go back and check your work. It's a lot. It's a lot of writing. It's going to take a lot of paper, but it's just kind of a little bit more straightforward. And, and so I like that personally. Okay, so the first one, let's kind of do these as we go. So 4 times negative 2 times negative 8 is positive. That'd be eight times eight is 64, positive 64. I kind of check as I go if I'm lucky. Positive 64. Uh, I said I was going to check as I go. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Not going to do that. Five times seven times seven. 35 times seven. 35 times 7 equals 245. So plus 245. Next one. Negative 3 times 3. No. 6 times 3 times 6. <laughs> 18 times 6, right? 18 times 6 equals 108. So plus 108. It is positive, right? Negative times positive times negative. So two negatives, uh, even number of negatives gives us a, a positive number. So we're looking pretty good so far. No big problems, right? So <coughs> now let's do our up diagonal. So these ones are going to be minus. So seven times two times six is 14 times six. 14 times 6 is 84, and it's positive, so minus 84. We're doing, it's minus, oops, it's minus, right, because we're going up. We're doing the up diagonal, so those are minus, right? Now let's do the next one. So this guy right here. So negative 6 times 7 times 4, so it's going to be negative in there, in the, and we'll put it in parentheses here in a minute. So 6 times 7 is... I don't know. Six times four is 24 <laughs> times seven. I don't know. Give me a break here, man. Give me a break. It's going to be okay. 168. So minus negative 168. 168. It's minus and it's negative because there's only one negative there, right? Okay, so let's do our little very last diagonal of this one. Don't worry. We've only got to do this three more times. So 8 times 3 times 5, so 15 times 8. 
15 times 8. Might could do that one in our head, but we're on a roll. So minus negative 120. Right, it's negative because there's only one negative, so it comes out negative. So let's kind of do these E's in bigger chunks on the with the calculator to assist because I think that's going to make our lives a little bit easier. So 64 plus 245 plus 108 equals 427. 427. This time I am going to go ahead and use the negative button. And actually, before I do that, let's let's kachink kachink these that need to be kachink kachinked. But I am going to use the negative button. That way I can go left to right. Um, you could do you could do it backwards and just use the minus button. So whatever works for you. So negative eighty four plus one sixty eight plus one twenty equals two hundred four. Positive 204. And we did all the negatives. So this minus, those are plus. So plus 204. Yeah, we're looking good. Plus 204. We got some big numbers. That can be fine. So 427 plus 204. So plus 427 equals 631. So equals 631. So there is our... Um, determinant of D, right? We've got to do that three more times. Here we go. We got this. It's going to be okay, All right? So here's the next one. D sub X, what would that be? Think about it. Use your heads. Okay, D sub X. Let me label it D sub X. We're going to replace that whole X column with these. So we're going to do negative 14, 47, 15, and then the rest are the same. So we've got 5, negative 2, negative 6, and then negative 6, 7, negative 8. You're like, this is so much more work than elimination. It isn't really, though. It's just, it's more, it's more um, tedious a little bit because it's kind of just the same patterns over and over and over again. So it is a little bit more tedious than, say, elimination, but it's, it's, so much easier to not make mistakes and so much easier to figure out where in the world your mistakes were when you do make them. So, I don't know. You may love it. You may hate it. Somewhere in between. We don't really know, but this is what we're going to roll with for this lesson. So, negative 14 times 2. 14 times 2 times 8. So, 16 times 14. 16 times 14 equals 224. 224 and then the next one 5 times 7 times 15 so 35 times 15 35 times 15 equals 525 so plus oh did I make a mistake I did make a mistake but I caught it before I got too far in what's wrong with this red one there are one two three negatives Odd number of negatives makes this a negative right there. Is that, is that on my screen? Do I have that adjusted right? I do. Looks just fine. Okay, the next one is this one right here. 6 times 47 times 6. So 36 times 47. 36 times 47 equals 1,692. Wow. Plus, or yeah, plus... And then two negatives, so it's positive. So what was it? One, six, nine, two. Now we're going to do the minuses. So we're going to do a minus here. 15, two, six. So 12 times 15. I feel like at some point in my life I had that memorized, but I don't today. 180. And it's positive 180. Because there's two negatives, right? 
So six times seven times 14, six, that, I broke that in my brain a minute ago. Let's put it back in my brain. Seven times five is 35 plus another seven, so 42. That's what I thought in my head earlier, but I got scared and ran away. So 42 times 14 is what we got here. 42 times, oops, x space, 42 times 14. Oh my goodness, 14 equals 558, so minus, and then it's positive 558. Was it 558? Yes, nope, yep, nope, nope, nope. How about 588? I'm glad I checked. We'll see, maybe we'll get through through this one without making any more mistakes. I, I can't guarantee it. 8 times 47 times 5. 8 times 5 is 40. So 40 times 47. 40 times 47 equals 1,880. So minus negative 1,880. Is that right? Double check. Great. Good job. So let's ka-chink, ka -chink the things that need to be. Ka-chunk, ka-chunked. Done. Easy peasy. So let's do these. This time I'm going to show you just because for variety's sake, this is a tedious process anyway. So instead of using the negative button, we can just add these and subtract this one, right? So we're going to do 5 to 5 plus 1, 6, 9, 2, minus 2, 2, 4, 1,993, 1,993. And then let's do this guy over here. So I'm going to start with the positive one. So I can just use the minus button, make my life easier. 1880 minus 588 minus 180 equals 1,112 positive. So plus 1,112. Add those together, so plus 1993 equals 3105. Check it with the notes. Looking good. We're doing good. We got to do two more, though. So D sub Y. <coughs> I'm going to kind of put a little bit of a visual stopper on things so we know what's happening. D sub y we would replace the y column right easy peasy so for the first bit it first column is the same so four three seven next column is the replaced one so negative 14 47 15 and then the last column is the same so it's negative six seven negative eight I'm gonna rewrite the first two columns so four three seven negative 14 47 15 here we go so four times 47 times negative eight so 32 times 47 32 times 47 is 1504 and it's negative, right? Because there's one negative. So negative 1,504. The next one, 14 times 7 times 7. So 49 times 14. 49 times 14 is 686. So plus, and it's negative negative 686 86 next one here we go 6 times 3 times 15 so 18 times 15 18 times 15 equals 270 so plus and it's negative cuz there's one negative on there odd number of negatives so negative, what was it? Five, no, I don't know. 270, easy peasy. Let's hit the next one. 
Seven times 47 times six, so that would be 42 again. We double check that. 42 times 47, 42 times 47 is 1,974. Did I already have that somewhere? Could I already just pulled it from somewhere else? No. Okay. <laughs> 1,974, so minus, and it's negative, 1,974, 974. The next one, 15 times 7 times 4, so 7 times 4 is 28. 28 times 15 times 15 is 420. So minus 420, that's two. Let's make it clear so I don't make a weird mistake because I wrote it crazy. All right, so yeah, that's right. Last one of those, last one of the diagonals. So eight times three times 14. So eight times three is 24, 24 times 14, 24 times 14 equals 336. So minus, and it's positive this time because there's two, there's an even number of negatives. So positive 336. Going back over here. Now, this, this is again, this is where I suggest using your head with the negatives because it makes you stop and engage. All of these have the same sign. So we're going to add them and keep the sign. So our answer is going to be negative, but we can just put in plus on all three of these things. So 1504 plus 686 plus 270 equals 2460. But remember, it's negative. Oops, we don't want that. We want this negative 2000. 460. So these guys, let's ka chink ka chink where we need to. So just right here. So let's start just do like we did a second ago. Start out with the positive ones and then do minus, which is the same as left or right this time, right? So 1,974 minus 420 minus 336 equals 1,218. So plus. 1,218. Now that, now here's here's another trick. These, we are, the signs are different, so we're going to subtract. Um, oh, it doesn't really matter. It's actually, there's it's not really a trick because it is minus. So minus 2, 4, 60. You, I don't know what I just said there, but you know what I should have said. Negative 1,242. Negative 1,242. There it is, double checking, 1,242. Looking great, everything's going off like gangbusters. So let's kind of make us a little bit of a divide here. Because we got one more of these to do. And then we can just kind of divide and get the answer. You see how, like, so I'm just going to throw out there. I know we're getting long anyway, but... It's this I'll I'll do it while I write I'll I'll say all this while I'm kind of writing this this uh, last matrix the D sub Z one because you don't need me to tell you all the all the bits you can probably figure out how to do the rest of it from here honestly without even I could probably quit the video right here and you probably still would be fine honestly you probably be able to do it on your own from here but anyway so I will I will note that you know you remember the other three by three video you remember how many mistakes I made on that. I've made one mistake on this, and I caught it before I went on, and that's it. And was that even on the two by two one? And the point is, that, of course, it's not as late, right? I'm making this in the afternoon, uh, later afternoon, right? But uh, it's and so I'm in a better mental state as far as this is concerned. I'm replacing the Z right here. Um, but the point is, is yeah, it's tedious and whatever else, but it's just a lot more straightforward as far as not making mistakes. It just it just really is. I'm going to rewrite this first call, first two columns, four, three. And so, I don't know. You may hate it. You may love it. I don't know. I don't know how you're going to feel about it. But 
if I have to do a three by three system by hand, you know, as I said, by hand, you can do it with a graphing calculator. You can do it with Excel and whatever else. But if you have, if I have to do a three by three system by hand, honestly, this is the way I'm going to go because I'm going to be less likely to make mistakes. We'll do eight times 15 here. Drag this guy over eight times 15 is 120 and let's see is it positive it's negative 120 120 plus this next one 35 times 47 is what it looks like to me excuse me 1645 the next one we got 18 times 14. Looks like to me 18 times 14 equals 252. So plus, and it's also positive. We got two negatives, right? Plus 252. And then minus. Seven times four is 28. 28 times 47. 28 times 47 equals 1,316. 1,316. Then we've got... Did we do that right? Oh, we made... Oh, look, I made, I made a mistake. I thought those looked weird. See, that's... I'm going to tell you. That's a reason to do the colors. Because... You can see what's going on. If you just try to do stuff in your head, you you may get away with it. You totally might get away with it, but it's it's easier to make a mistake, or it's easier to catch your mistakes as you go if you'll do the colors and do all the things. Just just saying, seven is fourteen. That's fourteen times fourteen is what that should have been. Fourteen times fourteen equals one ninety six. So minus positive one ninety six. Right, 196, yes. Okay, next guy, minus 24 times 47. Again, I, 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 keep, I keep making a point for that. 1128, okay, so and it's negative 1128. I keep making a point that it's it's a good way to do it. And I, I it's just, I mean, we're getting a lot into a long video at this point. That happens sometimes in Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal. It just does. As, but I, I, I don't feel like I can make the case strong enough. We've got 15 times 15 right here. 15, I feel like we did that earlier. I don't know, 15 times 15. That's 625, isn't it? No, 225. I don't know. I don't do well in the afternoons any better than I do in the evenings. It is positive. Yes, it's positive. Okay, here we go. So let's start by adding these and subtracting that one. Here we go. So we've got 1, 6, 4, 5 plus 2, 5, 2 minus 120 equals 1,777. I think I can remember that. 1,777. Let's ka -chink, ka chink where we need to. So blap, blap. Okay, so let's start out with the positive one right here. So 1128, 1128 minus 196 minus 225 equals 707. So plus 707. Uh, plus 1777. Enter. 2484. Man, we're doing good. 2484. So the last bit is just plug it in and do a division and then we're done. So the X one is going to be the X one. So 3105 over the just regular D one. So 631. And then the Y one is going to be this guy. So negative 12. Negative, tw yep, we're looking good. I don't know. I had a I had a fear for a second. Twelve forty two over six thirty one, and then we've got twenty four eighty four over six thirty one, and then we actually do that. 
3105 divided by 6, whoop, backspace, 631. Oh, my goodness. We're almost there. We can do it. What did I do? <gasps> Four. <laughs> I made a mistake a long time ago that I didn't catch. Plus 204. It's 631, but it should be 621 according to this. Oh, no. I'll pause and come back. <laughs> okay. It's easier to find. This right here should have been 417, which means all of these should be 621. Two, two, two. Right? So... Here's okay. So I know we keep we keep having things, and I'm I'm gonna type I'm gonna type as I type as I talk. But if you get to the end of these problems, in most, especially in like algebra two, if you get an ugly number, then and if they're all if they're this is this is how to pinpoint where you made a mistake. This is again another reason why I like Kramer's rule is because is because it's easy to easier to find where you made a mistake. If they're all ugly, and now I, I know I caught it before that because as or because I, I was able to look at notes and whatever else. But if you go and do this division and they're all ugly, then that means that your D has a mistake. If only the X is ugly, then probably the X has a mistake. If only yours, and this is not surefire, right? But if only the, you know, so you can kind of see where the mistake probably was instead of having to search back through page of, entire page of elimination. You know, you can, you can just, you can, it's easier to tell where the mistake probably happened if you look at it and whatever else. Like if I would have done that with 631, all of these answers would have come out ugly, every single one of them. And so I would have been able to be like, okay, I probably made a mistake in calculating the D because they're all ugly. But if if it was only the X that was ugly or whatever, then it's like, okay, I probably made a mistake on the D sub X one. And I can, so you can go and find your mistakes easier. There it is. And that's it. And that was a long one. That was a, but hopefully it was good. Hopefully you got some good stuff and it was straightforward and you understood what was happening. That's Kramer's rule. We have one more lesson in this chapter and then we will be through if you're one of my students, I'll see you in class. Do your homework. Otherwise, thanks for joining us. Let us know whether it was helpful or not or whatever else. Bye-bye.